is to be in church on the first Sunday of February 2019. Yeah. And it is the hand of God that has sustained our journey and has kept us to see the dawning of a brand new day. Brand new day. Not just another day, but a brand new day. Brand new day. We give the Lord glory. Brand new mercy. To all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, thank God for you. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor you are important to you. That's right, everybody in the kingdom of God is important. Matthew chapter 8, Matthew chapter 8, that's from according to Matthew chapter 8, verse 2. Matthew chapter 8, verse 2.
Yeah. Might I say, might I just parenthetically pause here this morning to suggest that powerful preaching with authority has nothing to do with simply the tone of a person's voice. Well. Powerful preaching with authority is not just solely based upon the depth of their voice. You can right. sound like James Earl Jones. That's right. And there's no power in the preaching. Yeah. So powerful preaching is based upon <laughs> the anointing that resides upon an individual's life. Yes, sir. And the fact that that individual knows what they're talking about. Yeah. I can tell you, Deacon Cotton, that the only way you can know what you're talking about as it relates to preaching the gospel is if you know who you're talking about. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Powerful preaching is what attracted this crowd that was following Jesus as they made their way down the mountainside. And as they made their way down the mountainside, Jesus comes in contact with a gentleman possessing leprosy. Now he's just finished preaching about kingdom work and kingdom service. And now he bumps directly into kingdom work yeah. and kingdom service. Yes, sir. But I suggest this morning that working for the kingdom never ceases. Well, because if you're going to preach about kingdom service and kingdom building, you will come in contact with the opportunity to put your preachment into a practical service. Yes, sir. Jesus was preaching about serving others and preaching about loving others, preaching about doing what it is God has willed us to do as men and women of God, and then he bumps right into an opportunity to act out what it is he was just talking about. Yeah. But I suggest this morning, child of God, that Jesus will always reveal unto us opportunities for us to put our preachment into practical use. Yes. There will always be a privilege and honor and opportunity, if you will, for you and I to act out what it is we're preaching about. Yes. This is why you've got to be so careful on what it is you're declaring out of your mouth. Yeah. This is why you've got to be so cautious on what it is you say you want to do for the kingdom of God. Yes. yes. Because if you say you want to do it, I contend that the Lord will open up an opportunity for you to do what it is you said you want to do. Yeah. Don't you say you want to work for the kingdom if you really don't want to work for the kingdom. Yeah. Don't say that you really want to serve God if you really don't want to serve God. Because the more you say you want to work for the kingdom, the more opportunity will begin to avail itself for you to do some kingdom work. Yeah. Jesus was just preaching about kingdom service, teaching about kingdom work. And here he bumps directly into the opportunity to offer his hand into kingdom service. Yeah. Comes down from the mountain from preaching and has to bump right into putting his preachment into a practical. Yeah. He bumps into a leper. And the leper he bumps into kneels down and began to worship Jesus. Yeah. He worshiped Jesus and does not just offer his worship and homage unto the Lord, but he then begins to ask the Lord a question. Jesus, can you make me clean if you're willing to do so? All right. Jesus responds unto the letter, well, yes, I am willing. And according to the text, the leper was automatically cleansed. All right. Jesus tells the leper, go and show yourself to the priest. Yeah. Allow the priest to declare that you have been cleansed. Yeah. Offer unto him the appropriate sacrifice that you should render for his declaration that you have been cleansed. Yes, sir. Now, what really grabbed my attention this morning, Deacon Conklin, was not the simple cleansing of the leper, yeah. but the manner in which the leper rendered himself over unto Jesus. Yes.
Yes, sir. He comes unto Jesus, not simply asking if Jesus could cleanse him. Well, but the question is formed from the aspect: I know you can't cleanse me, but are you willing to cleanse me? And yeah. all that journey, child of God, there will be times where we encounter Christ and have the privilege to ask Him for what we need. Yeah. And the appropriate way that this leper demonstrates unto us is not by questioning his ability to do so, but making sure it's in his will for him to do it for your life. Yeah. There are many along that journey that have been asking that same question in the form of this leper. God, if, if you're willing to do it for me. Yeah. God, are you willing to do it for me? Yes, sir. There have been many sick on their sick bed that have been asking that question. Are you willing to do it for me? Yes. There have been some that have been twisted in between life's emotions that have asked the Lord, are you willing to do it for me? Yeah. There have been some that have been stuck in between a rock and a hard place. And you ask the Lord, are you willing to do it? Some of us are not bound to people, places, or things. 
Jesus 
gets there, and what does he do? What does he do? Get on his knees and worship Christ. He, he's not just demonstrating that he knows God can do it by what he's saying out of his mouth. He's showing him by his action of worship. Yes. Yes. He showed them by what he does for the master. Yeah. He sent suffering the leprosy. And he doesn't just say, I know you can do it. He shows them by his worship. Yeah. Here's how you demonstrate God's power by knowing that you got an issue, but still giving him the praise and the
dependence on the will of God. Yeah. It can be thy will. It demonstrates his dependence on the will of God. It can be thy will. It, it demonstrates his knowledge of God's ability. But look at the text again. He kneels on his face. His knees worships Christ. Yeah. After he kneels and worships Christ, he then asks the Lord from this aspect, I know they can't do it, but I just want to know, are you willing to do it for little old me? Yes. And according to his demonstration, not just in lip service, but in his actions, well, Jesus responds unto him that says, yes, I am willing to do it for Yes. Me. And according to Matthew chapter 8, the leper is automatically cleansed. Yeah. And Jesus says unto the leper, just simply go and show yourself to the priest. Yeah. My suggestion that when he demonstrated his knowledge, 